You know, the Bible talks about in the last days, deception is going to rise. There's going to be a great falling away. All of these things are going to happen that we know about. We talk about it on the channel all the time. And one of the things and one of the points I'm always trying to drive home here that I know that God has put on my heart to share with you all is knowing the Word of God and understanding the Word of God and understanding how to read the Bible correctly. Because there's so many teachings out there, especially with the day and age of the internet and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and you know, you've got everybody. Now, if you have a cell phone, you can teach, preach, and share the Word of God as you see fit. And overall, praise God for that, right? The name of Jesus is spreading. But it's more important than ever to understand and know the Word of God for yourself because there are people out there that are misunderstood in their teaching and then some that are even wolves in sheep's clothing that we have to be aware of. Now, if you're a believer, then you're going to agree that the Bible has to be the standard in which we live our lives by. It's what God has given us. If you look at the definition of the word standard right here, an idea or thing used as a measure, norm, or model in comparative evaluations. But here's the problem. When everybody starts to look at the Bible and say, well, this is what it means to me, and that's what it means to me, and this is what I get from it, and that's how I see it, slowly but surely, it no longer becomes a standard because we have all of these different definitions. And now it's based on that person's opinion. It's based on that person's insight and their personal revelation from the Lord of the Holy Spirit that we're relying on. And it's not something that we can attain for, for ourselves. You see what I mean? There is a way to read scripture and there is a right and wrong way. This isn't just some big mysterious book like I used to think it was and very few could actually understand it. But a lot of these things are historical. Yes, there's a lot of prophetic word and prophecies and things that use a lot of symbolism that are really kind of hard to understand. And we, we have a hard time wrapping our mind around it. But a lot of these things in scripture are historical events, things that actually happen, real people, real cultures that we can learn about. And when you start to learn about these things, you will begin to see how, man, we really deviated from what we would call the standard. It's a growing passion of mine that you guys might understand the word of God for yourself. And I believe this passion is from the Lord. I believe he wants his people to know his word because if we put ourselves in the shoes of the audience that was hearing these letters the recipient of some of these letters or some of these sermons if we can put ourselves in the shoes of the writers if we can understand the culture if we can understand what it meant to them then then and only then can we understand what it means for us now and when you begin to understand this if you want to talk about deep revelation that's when the holy spirit really starts to move in your life and bring the word to life. And also it does something really fascinating. At the same time, it will expose all of the error of other teachings. When people try to say, well, this is what it means and that's what it means and this is what I think and this is some revelation I'm getting from God, you will quickly learn uh, that's not exactly what that means. And it's simply by learning the truth. It's by learning what the scriptures actually say and what they meant to say. I have two examples for you that I want to show you here that by Jesus and by Paul, that the people that they were speaking to knew exactly what they were saying, okay? Let's look at uh, the church of Laodicea. Since I've been studying Revelation 2 and 3, this is fresh on my mind. Let's look at this one. He says, And to the angel of the church in Laodicea, write the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works, you're neither hot or cold. Would that you were either hot or cold. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Now, this scripture right here is very famous. We would call it the lukewarm church. A lot of people say this is the church of America. We are that lukewarm church. Many take this passage to mean, you know, that uh, God wants us to be on fire for him, get riled up, get passionate for him. And while that's good, and, I, and I'm all for being passionate for the Lord, and I believe I am passionate for the Lord, and I want you to be passionate for the Lord too, that's not exactly what Jesus means here. He doesn't mean that I would would rather you be cold as in like the furthest away from Christianity you can possibly get the opposite of hot like Satanist or atheistic or whatever you know that's not what he's 
saying here, but rather the people of this town were a very rich and a very blessed people. This was a great place to live. They were without lack. I mean, it, you see it here. He says, for you say, I'm rich, I've prospered, and I need nothing. So these people were very much like we are in America and in the West. We're well cared for. We're prosperous. We have more than we need. But they had one big problem here in Laodicea. Their water supply was awful or non-existent, so they had to pipe water in from a neighboring town. By the time the water got into their town, it was, well, you guessed it, lukewarm. Also, it was full of all these minerals and like deposits. You could look inside the pipes and see like this calcium buildup and all this mineral buildup where the water was just a bad supply of water. So if you tried to boil it to purify it, it would stink up your house. If you tried to cook your food with it, it made your food nasty. It was just a bad supply. It was gross water. So they had all of this going for them, but they had no water supply, okay? But their neighboring towns were known for their hot springs. And then over here, this other neighboring town had large mountains where it would snow and the runoff from the mountains would give them this cold, refreshing water. So Jesus is comparing them to the neighboring towns. I would rather you be like the ones with the hot springs or the ones with the cool, uh, pure drinking water over here rather than what you currently have. He said, you disgust me. Your way of life is disgusting. Um, he says, for you say I'm rich, I have prospered, I need nothing, not realizing that you're wretch, that you're wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Also, Laodicea was a banking center, so there was a lot of gold, a lot of money, a lot of wealth. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire. This is a reference to all of the shopping they would do, all of the markets that they had, as well as the banking center. So do you see the point that I am making here? These people, this was not a mysterious like word from the Lord. This was not a figure of speech Jesus was speaking in. There are metaphors that he's using that they would have fully understood. If you were living in Laodicea and received this word from the Lord and you called yourself a Christian, this would have cut your heart. This would have pierced your heart and you would have fallen down and repented if you had a repentant heart towards Jesus. You would have known exactly what he meant. This was not up for debate. It wasn't up for, you know, well, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? No, they all knew exactly what he meant. It's very clear. See, Jesus wants us to know his word. He wants us to know what he's saying. He wants us to know him. It's not guesswork. He's not just giving us puzzles, hoping that we put it together. If we put it together, we pass and we go to heaven. If we don't put it together, we fail and go to hell. That's not his character and that's not what he's like. He's speaking to them in a way that they would clearly understand this message. They are not confused whatsoever. They are not taking this as go be on fire for Jesus. What they are taking this as, as a stern rebuke. You know, affluence can often, or the, you know, building up of riches and money can push out our need for Jesus. And that's what was happening in this town. You remember when Jesus is talking to the rich young ruler, he said, it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. He talks about that and the dangers of wealth and how we become comfortable, how we lack, we, we lack in our time of prayer and devotion to Jesus. We don't need him as much when we have material gain when we are prosperous in our lives. So he warns us. He said it's difficult. It's not sinful to be wealthy. That's not what I'm saying. But it, there is that danger as affluence increases that the need for Christ decreases in so many people's lives. And that is the rebuke they are receiving here in this letter. So that's Jesus. That's one example I want to show you very clear, crystal clear. The people understood exactly what he meant. It wasn't this crazy, like spiritual like puzzle that they had to put together. Do you see what I'm saying? Now I want to show you an example from the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 3. He's talking to them about, you know, faith and then works of the law and all of this, you know, most of what Paul preached and talked about in grace. And he's teaching them here. You know, my mentor told me and taught me about these few verses here. He said he wrote a paper on it when he was in school. But this is so fascinating and speaks to how Paul so clearly understood the culture. He understood the people 
people and he knew how to explain the gospel in a way that they would so clearly understand it. Starting in verse 24, he says, So then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we're no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. Now, what is the guardian? The guardian was someone that would go grab the children from their house. They would escort them from their home to where they would be taught, to their school of sorts. The guardian was not the teacher, but the guardian was more of the chaperone. It would escort them from point A to point B and make sure that they got there safely where they would be taught by the teacher. So Paul is using this uh, metaphor, this uh, analogy, this example to explain explain how the law works. The law leads us to Christ, and Christ is our teacher. It's really fascinating, and it's actually brilliant. If you look at the book of Romans, the gospel is explained by means of the law in a way that Romans would understand. Likewise, if you look at Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews was writing to Christian Jews, and it uses the old covenant, explaining the new covenant in a way that they would understand grace. It's all written to the people and to the audience, and it's catered to that audience so that they would get the point of what is being said. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying by all this? It wasn't meant to be this mysterious spiritual knowledge that was being received. It wasn't meant to be something that was confusing. It wasn't meant to be something that led people back to that writer or back to that religious leader, but rather it was meant to point people to the person of Jesus. So godly teaching is clear. Godly teaching is not confusing. Are there things that we have to wrestle with? Are there different tensions that we have to wrestle with, as my pastor would say, in the Bible? Yes, absolutely. Are there certain concepts and things that we'll mull over that will, you know, that the Holy Spirit will have to teach us over time that we'll learn by research and experience? Absolutely, there are different things. We're not going to understand everything immediately, but overall, godly teaching points us back to scripture, points us back to the person of Jesus. And as we read the word of God, we don't just see the blessings of God. We don't just see how God sees us and what's in it for us, but really you will begin to see the person and the character of God emerge. You'll see the person of Jesus emerge. That's what godly teaching does. That's what reading the Bible correctly does. If you want that deep revelation, learn to read scripture properly. Take that extra step, my friend, and do that little bit of research if there's something that you don't understand. Because if you can hear it the way it was originally intended to be heard, man, that changes everything. There's too many people out here leading people unto themselves by purposefully twisting up scripture. And then there are those who do it erroneously. There's ones who do it ignorantly. You know, I've done that myself more than enough. I've done that so many times in my life, it's not even funny. So there's grace. But then there are those who do it on purpose that are leading people unto them. So may this serve, you know, as a warning and a caution and, you know, equip us to be aware and to not fall into uh, deceptive teachings and ignorant teachings and practices by knowing the Word of God for ourselves. Obviously, this is a topic I'm very passionate about, and I could go on and on about this, but I'm going to leave it there for today. We're going to end the video here. But if you'd like to support what we're doing here at Glasshouse TV on a monthly basis, you can head over to our Patreon page and sign up there. I'll put the link to it in the description below, or if you'd like to just give a one-time contribution to what we're doing in the ministry here at Glasshouse TV. Those links are in the description below as well. It's much appreciated, but certainly not required. If you're not subscribed, I would love it if you would do that and hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button, and that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people. But thank you so much for spending your time here today and watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.